Hi, I wanted to share with you today how easy it is to uh, paint from a photo. What I've done here, what I have here is a, I have a 16 by 20 canvas. And what I've done is I've taken the uh, Traditions raw umber, thinned it down with water, and then uh, painted a ground over the canvas. Um, this particular canvas, I really didn't gesso first or do a smooth first uh, because my uh, daughter wants kind of a, a rough textured uh, painting and so I'm going to uh, leave this one with the, the roughness because I want that texture there but normally you would go ahead and prepare your canvas with with gesso or a particular mix of um, uh, the Traditions Texture Medium and white paint or dark paint or even raw umber paint and the um, light primer or dark primer depending on what color you're using. So, and smooth the, and you would apply it and let it dry and sand it and do this two or three times until you get a smooth um, surface. But as I said, in this, this particular instance I want that roughness because she wants the texture. She wants a value painting, um, a lot like the uh, Tier 1 Still Life by Nadine Masters and Donna Richards. And so that's why I'm starting out with the raw umber ground. And she wants a picture of a retro toaster. So I found this picture online. When you find a picture online you want to make sure it's public domain or maybe it's from advertising or get the permission from the um, photographer to use it. So I found this one online and I printed it in color because I want to have a color copy to use. And then I also made a black and white uh, version of it. You can do this with various uh, programs in your computer or if you don't have any programs like that, most of us do, but if you don't then you can uh, set it to print and set it to print on black only not color. So, or black and white only without color. All this is really is the absence of color. And you want to do it this way because you want to see your values, you want to see your darks and lights. Because you need to paint what you see, not what you think you see. And uh, we see we have some darks here in the clock and some very lights. We have like a, a 10, value 10 here, and a value 1 here. This is your center of interest area, and this is where your darkest darks and lightest lights will be. Also, you have some more darks up here. Now, obviously, this is um, a picture of a particular object, and uh, some of the uh, intensity rules may not apply because we have this as our center of interest but we also have very very dark darks up here. So when we get to this point what we'll do is we'll diffuse this a little bit to where it's not a value 1 but maybe a value uh, maybe a 4 or a 5 just to, to show that um, we have perspective that, that this is going back into the distance. But you also see that you have a darker area here and that delineates the face of the toaster. You have some darker areas here. You can't see all of that very well in this color picture the way you can in this. So you always want to start out with the value picture, um, with just your black and white values. So then you want to decide how big you want your picture to be. And since this is a 16 by 20, then it's, then it's going to be quite large. So what you want to do then is enlarge your photo. And you, if you have programs that will help you do that, that's great. Um, this one I had to do some trial and error. And I chose, to, first of all, to enlarge my picture by 100 and to reprint it at 120%, so I enlarged it by 20%. It wasn't quite large enough, so I brought it up 10 more percent and ended up settling on 130% enlargement, so or 30% enlargement, but with my printer setting set at 130%. Now I also had to piece this together because my printer only prints 8.5 by 11, and so that's what I did. I don't know if you can. 
can see that I have several pieces here. I just moved my photo around on my printer until I got all of the sections um, portrayed and then I just pieced it together and then taped it on top of each other until I got a complete picture. And so this is what we're going to paint from and as you can see with this enlargement you can really really well see the, um, the value changes. We've got really dark here, got our dark here, we've got some shading over here. So um, it's really easy to paint from this. So next what I will do is I will get a piece of either mylar or tracing paper and lay it over top of here and trace the outlines of this toaster. I'll trace these, I'll trace this section, you know, I really, I really will trace it all. And then um, I will decide where I want it on my, to go on my canvas. I think I'm going to kind of go for a lower center, low center. And uh, then I will trace it on there, and but trace the outlines only at first, okay? And um, once we've done that, then we're going to come back and we're going to enhance some of the background. I'm going to make this like a silhouette painting, and I'm going to have um, very dark edges of umber, raw umber around the, the uh, corners, and lighter as we get towards our still life object and then have a very light probably this same color of light uh, around the toaster and then we're going to paint it we're not she doesn't want it turquoise the photo I found was turquoise but we're going to make a mix of sapphire blue and blue gray so um, once I get this tra traced on and we're ready to start in with more of our background then I'll, uh, we'll come back